Well, there is basketball tonight. Despite all this trade talk, Bradley Beal and the Washington Wizards with a big one. They got the rival, the Boston Celtics, although a lot of the pieces to that rivalry from last year's playoff series not around anymore, but we'll see it coming up at 8 Eastern on TNT. Kenny the Jet Smith checks in as he does each and every Thursday here on TNT. What's up, man? It's been a fun day, huh? What happened? I, I, was, I, was, on a, I was on a flight all day. I didn't, did anything happen in the NBA? Well, yeah, a few things, and, and I know you got Wi-Fi on that flight. I know. I've heard about that. Uh, you do. Cleveland Cavaliers making a whole lot of noise. They uh, brought in four new players, sent out six. They get younger. They get more athletic. They get the ability to shoot three, maybe a little more defensive-minded, but they lose Isaiah Thomas. They sent him out after acquiring him in the Kyrie Irving deal. Kenny, let, let's go out to D.C. We're joined by uh, Chris Weber from Players Only Fame. If that's where he's famous from? That's it. Where is that? Wow, what do they got going oh, on? It's a band there, out here. It's a band, baby. Okay. I don't know if y'all saw go -Go? Line, but it's popping. Are they here. playing Go Go? Oh, get out. No, not right. It's just a high school band. Oh, they I thought like it was some Go Go music. It was some Chuck oh. Brown or something. I'm like, you know oh, man. Get to that. All they right. Get no, to that's that. the, new, the new G League team for the Wizards. Okay, go -Go. say no more. <laughs> All right, C Webb here. Uh, let, let's get your thoughts. You know, the, the Celtics right now still in first place in, in the East. They go silent today at the trade deadline. But meanwhile, here come the Cavs. What's the feel you get on all the moves the Cavs made? How much more of a threat does that make them, obviously, to Boston just to get out of the East? Yeah, I'm, I would like to address the Cleveland, but let's go back to Boston. Yeah, Boston didn't have a trade, but they signed a free agent. And Greg Monroe definitely will help Al Horford on the block. He would definitely help with triple handoffs, and they're switching. So I, I don't want fans to think that it wasn't a move by the Boston Celtics. They didn't need a trade. They went out and got help, and they didn't need the trade. Now, as far as we look at Cleveland, I, I like the moves. I think that Cleveland got younger. I think LeBron has players that will listen to him and respect him and, and work hard. And so uh, I, I like it. And better yet, also, if I can skip to Lakerville, uh, my friend Rob Palinka, Magic Johnson, I didn't think that they would be able to unload some of those contracts that they did. So for Cleveland and the Lakers, I see this being a win-win situation right now. Well, you know, see what, you know, have you ever seen or been in part of anything like this many moves by one team? That's what's the uh, probably overlying factor, like that many players in the middle of the season. Uh, yeah, sorry guys, I'm just working with my uh, headphones over here, but no, I don't remember a trade that had that many guys and that much movement, and I just think that says a lot about Kobe Altman, I think that says a lot about other teams who really were incentivized to try to do something. For me as a fan, I'm excited because I think this means that it's a better chance that LeBron stays in Cleveland, I'm not sure, but... Um, I, I haven't seen this much movement before, Kenny, not with one or two teams, but we haven't seen a player go to the finals like LeBron. What is it, six straight times and probably wants to go, you know, definitely wants to go again. So I definitely like the sense of urgency. That's why I like basketball. We make trades. We don't wait five, seven years to get it done. Quick movement now. So uh, as I said before, I think everybody should be happy, each team. Uh, it doesn't seem like anybody got tricked in this one, that everybody got what they wanted. It seemed like the, the days leading up to the deadline that the Wizards were involved with a lot of different players. They really don't do anything of, of significance. Were, were you surprised that, that they didn't try and improve the roster, especially with all the talk that's coming out of that locker room of late that they would try and do what the Cavs did and try and change the spirit of the team? Isn't it funny now how maybe Cleveland has a clear slate and Washington doesn't? Yesterday everybody was panicking, saying Cleveland's done, terrible locker room environment. And now for a team that's in fourth place like Washington, it's funny that they're in that same situation. Um, I think Washington has leadership issues. I think they have locker room issues that unless you get new players and leaders over here, I don't know if it can be fixed in one um, trade. And so I am surprised that they didn't do more. I mean, three years ago, I thought that they would have passed um, Toronto right now. I thought they'd be sitting second in the East. We didn't know about the moves that Boston would make in the Kyrie Irving. But before all of that, I thought that Washington would be number two. And it just seems like they haven't fulfilled their potential. And you just wonder why, because they have so much talent. And um, you just hope that it's coming. But, yeah, I'm surprised they didn't have a trade. I'll tell you what, that band is pretty talented behind you. I mean, it, and you, too. I mean, the multitasking here, that's impressive broadcasting skills, skills by you, too, Red. Uh, thank you. I know Ernie Johnson. <laughs> <laughs>
We got some players See, we be. Yes, hey, sir. Thanks for having me on here. Hey, Kenny, and um, you know you had internet on your private, yeah, uh, yeah. on your private plane. Yeah, internet. You got pedicure, manicure. You know, Kenny does it all, man. Don't, the, don't actually, to Kenny. He knows the, the, all the bodies are buried, man. I, I talked to I talked to the pilot. It was just off for that for the night. That's oh, why. oh, okay, okay, yes, okay. As long as he gets it fixed for the flight, he'll get it fixed on the way back home. Oh, okay, handle that. See, so well, we'll check in with you at the top of the hour. We got the Wizards and Celtics on TNT. Kenny, um, obviously, anytime there's a move, it, it, we, we look at how it affects LeBron, how it affects the landscape. Now that we know these deals are done, how do you look at the East? And, and then furthermore, how do you look at the Cavs against the Dubs or the Rockets or whoever you have in terms of what they've done? I, you know, I, I don't think that the Cavaliers can pay attention to the Western Conference. Western Conference is a different animal. They will beat each other up because I'm not even sure – at times when they were going to the finals in the last three years, if they were a Western Conference team, they could have gotten out of the West, possibly. So it, it, they have to say, what is the Eastern Conference landscape, and can we beat that? And then let's, like, let's see if you can beat LeBron James four times because he is the X factor. He is still the best basketball player on the planet at this point. And so he has an advantage even against the superstar players. So... It's really about that, the landscape of the Eastern Conference. And, you know, I was listening to a lot of stuff uh, after I landed. Right. And, um, you know, people talking about, well, what's that do for the future of Cleveland? And do you make moves? And if you ever have LeBron James on your team and you're not trying to win it all, you're doing the wrong moves. Everything that you have to do when you have LeBron James, and it's been proven over the last nine years, is you're trying to win an NBA championship. There is nothing second best. There's no making the Eastern Conference Finals. There's no bringing players along. There's no waiting for anyone. You have the best player on the planet who's been there nine times, and you have to win it all. Every move you make is to win it all. And that's what Cleveland is saying. Now, I'm surprised how many moves they made mm -hmm. because typically it is – just you look at Isaiah Thomas and what he did last year. I don't think he was a healthy one, but if you look at what he did last year and when he comes there, there's an adjustment period even for a guy who's a scoring with the ability he had. You look at Paul George in the first month of the season with Oklahoma City. He was not an NBA All-Star, and you're like, what's going on? And then all of a sudden now he is who we thought he was. So there's adjustment periods, and that's why I was surprised that that many guys got moved in this time. Yeah, and David Griffin's been talking about it with David Aldridge, that maybe it's more about the guys they got rid of than it is about the guys that they brought in. Well, I don't know if it's even, you know, that, that's speculative, you know, and, and, and he, he might have some different information that I don't. But just looking at from the outside in, I just think overall, you know, it was a sh it's a window that feels like it was closing. Mm -hmm. uh, and, they, and to me, and as I said, when you're playing with LeBron James, you cannot wait. There's no wait period. Right. We have to win now. And I don't know if they could wait for Isaiah Thomas to get to be what he's going to be six, from, six months from now. Because Isaiah Thomas, six months from now, is going to be that Isaiah Thomas we saw last year. He's going to be healthy. He's going to be active. He's going to be quick. He's going to be – it's like driving tra – like working out, getting ready for the NBA season is like driving traffic down Peachtree. But then when you jump on an Indy 500 – that's the NBA. It's a different speed and different pace. You cannot prepare for that until you're in it. In 15, 16 games that he's been back, you cannot be ready for that yet. And he will be. He will be Isaiah Thomas, 25, 27-point scorer again. But he, they, I don't just think that they could wait on it. Well, we'll see how this impacts the Celtics, the Raptors, and other teams in the Eastern Conference. All the moves. Cavs just have 29 games left starting tomorrow night here in So we're asking you on.